Hey, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is a lesson of persistence. Persistence is what I learned here recently. And uh, I'm with somebody I've known for many, many years, Pete Wilhoyt. And uh, Pete, you're playing tonight with Mike Dowdy. Mike Dowdy, yeah. Dowdy. Oh, people Mike pronounce Dowdy. well. Okay. People pronounce it different ways. I think it's uh, originally Dowdy, but it's been Americanized to Dowdy. So, well, uh, the reason I'm talking to persistence is uh, when things don't always work out. Sometimes it's to your benefit. And uh, I'm going to tell you the quick story, real quick. Uh, Drumline, of course, I covered Pete and uh, his brothers. And the Kenny Aronoff story was the first story we wrote, and I didn't get it sold. And I started Drumline because nobody wanted it. So uh, I failed miserably uh, to sell my story. But uh, the entire thing you're looking at now is a result of that. And also, Pete, you know, uh, tell a little bit about your story. Um, you grew up in Bloomington. Talk about kind of your career just in a nutshell because you told me over dinner quite a bit. But just uh, give a quick rundown. Yeah, so my career in a nutshell, I was born and raised in Bloomington, Indiana, where Kenny Aronoff lived for a long time. So at age nine, I started taking drum lessons with him and um, just walking into his drum palace, as I like to used to call it. Uh, I was totally inspired by the, the drums and the platinum records on the wall and his stories of the industry and famous musicians that I loved that he had worked with. And it really inspired me to want to play the drum. So kind of started a band with a friend and then eventually was in a real band with that friend, The Cutters, and we made three albums, went on tour, recorded in LA at a and Studios, which then became Henson Studios, which I then recorded with after I joined a British band, Fiction Plane, in 2003. And uh, toured the world, opened for the police, which was an amazing experience, played stadiums and all over the world, and got to play with other artists, uh, out of I lived in New York for seven years and got to know Mike Doty, who used to be the lead singer for a band called Soul Coughing, which had a couple hits in the 90s. So Mike and I have been playing together for about six years. I've done his last three albums. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're here in St. Louis playing at the old old rock house. So, so. Okay. Um, yeah, my first time at this venue, and uh, I was chasing after uh, one of your fiction playing buddies the other day, and uh, you were trying to help me. Um, track him down, but you're like, hey, uh, Joe Sumner was opening for his dad, but uh, Gordon, hey, Gordon. Um, anyway. And you're like, wait a second, I'm playing in St. Louis because you found out I'm from St. Louis. So by not getting that thing, that lined up, I was discovered you uh, were playing here, and I'm like, well, shoot, I'd rather talk to drummers anyway. <laughs> so that's another, uh, you know, that not working out just led me to you today, so I feel lucky. I feel lucky, too. I Total, either you told me or I totally forgot you lived here, and it just it was a happy coincidence. So, yeah, I'm glad we hooked up. Happy coincidence. There are no coincidences. <laughs> Only uh, well-laid plans. Anyway, um, I saw you play live in a huge, huge area, uh, huge arena with Fiction Plane, and then now I'm going to see you more intimately. But uh, there's a lot of jazz in your thing. There's some intricacies in your playing, some regular groove stuff. Talk about... Your style, how you develop your style. So and what's I'm, kind of Pete Wilhoy tissue about your playing? <laughs> well, I, as we talked about over dinner, I I started kind of this band in third grade, and it was sort of Beatlesque, like very simple uh, piano and drums. And then I started getting into jazz, and so I actually got a jazz degree from Indiana University and was way into jazz and played in a bunch of different jazz groups from trios to quintets and stuff, which I still like to do. I just don't get a chance to do it as much, but that helped me to learn the jazz language. And so that really helped me become a better musician for all types of music, I feel. I, I took that sort of attitude and playing towards the rock format. So having a, a wide range of dynamics and a wide range of maybe language really helped me, I think, when it came to Mike, because Mike's vibe nowadays is he does this thing called face calls or just calls, where he will, within the framework of a song, he will bring you in and out and or ask you to do something very new and like experimental within the framework of the song. But it's basically what he's doing is he's taking this idea that I trust you as a musician, I trust your musicianship, so I'm tossing you the spotlight or I'm, I'm giving this part of my song to you in a live format to do what you want, which is it's, it's a huge 
honor and a, re and a respect thing. Um, and I definitely attribute to me feeling comfortable in that arena because of my jazz background. Um, the Fiction Plane gig was a great rock trio thing, but we had m tons of nights of there's a framework of here's a song and within this part of the song we are just going to do whatever happens on the night, which is great. It was a great way for me to express my improvisational chops within that framework as well. So it's, it's been a part of my playing for a long time. And I'm, I'm happy that I know that language of jazz because I think it definitely informs my playing as oh, a musician. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. We're, right. we're being <laughs> photobombed by Jim Morrison, and uh, which is appropriate because um, the doors kind of came from uh, one of the things I heard of why they got the name was there are things that are known and things which are unknown. And the thing between those two things, the known and the unknown, are the doors. <laughs> if, is that true or not? But anyway, you're talking about discovering through music. And you told me uh, a little bit ago that you're playing, even though after 20 years, you're playing now, you're very happy uh, with your playing, how it's evolved. And, and talk about you're still discovering things about yourself. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I think that's one approach to life, not just music, that I'm trying to take is that you can take each experience and try and learn from it and try and be positive, whether it's something that is stopping you or preventing you from a goal. You kind of, well, how can I get around this or learn how to overcome this? And so within my playing, um, all my influences that I grew up listening to, whether it's Max Roach to Bonham or whether it's Kenny to Sean Pelton to Stuart Copeland, right? Some of my biggest heroes I got to either get lessons from or watch them play every night. You know, when we were on the police tour, I got to watch Stuart play every night. And his, not just his playing, but his attitude of being a type A personality and wanting to take those drums and really put them to the forefront and push the music was something I always appreciated about his playing. His hi-hat work, his cross-stick work was something that was, it was uh, energetic, it was, it was exciting. It made the music like propel forward. So in that way, I've taken some of those ideas of Kenny's like two and four has got to be the loudest thing. Sean's idea of your body has to dance. You're the machine that dances. And Stuart's aggressiveness on hi-hat and cross-stick stuff and I've used it in my own playing. Um, so I'm super excited more so now than I ever have been about playing music because every day is a gift for, for me and I feel like it's sweeter now because I have a family and I'm still playing music and every day that I get to do that, I'm super happy because I'm just trying not to get a real job. That's, that's, the, that's the gig. <laughs> Well, somebody's dead who we won't mention, who uh, um, said music is its own reward. And I always just kind of go back to that when everybody talks about playing music. It's like, whatever level of success you might feel, if it's almost like I get to play baseball today or, you yeah. know, if that's your thrill. But uh, we've seen that in movies, just that sentiment in the, in the rookie or something. I get to play music today. Yeah, and I mean, that, maybe that's your, uh, your feeling yeah, right now. Absolutely. It. And, and I, some of that for me personally came with age. You know, when you're, we, I think I talked to you about this earlier. When you're younger, you know, you've got this drive and you've got this maybe naive, romantic idea of what this is you're getting into. I mean, you want to be the best. I want to be the best drummer and I want to be in a band that makes it huge. And without those sentiments and without that driving force, you may not have done it at all, you know. And so... I try and keep that on perspective. I take those young, sentimental things and I try and hold on to them in some way and say, you know what, I am playing music with musicians that I totally respect and love and, and wow, is that an honor. And, and so I soak that in more. I take more time to be like, this is great and wow, what a life I'm having. So yeah, that's, that's where my head's at these days. We'll talk about jazz bissonette. I just uh, saw him the other day play every style of music, solid as a rock. But uh, I put him up on the—he signed something for me. I put him up on the wall of blame because I call it uh, partially to blame for my career, and I got to blame you and your crew, your IU brothers, Aaron Alf and all those guys you, you came up with. Because without you guys, uh, I certainly would be doing this. So uh, thank you. Uh, it's our fifth year, and uh, it was an honor to start off with the story about Pete and uh, 
band of drummers and uh, to continue to see your career tonight. And uh, I'm excited about the jazz improvisational aspect of what you're going to do. So uh, cool. anyway, this is the best interview that uh, you've ever done. So <laughs> uh, just uh, if you want to say any final words. Well, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you're still doing it. And I'm glad that you're still jazzed about drums. You know, I mean, it's important to have to hold on to that flame of like what you really get excited about so keep it up man i'm happy to be a part of it and we're in the same headspace this is i'm psyched to be doing it as you are to be playing so we'll keep rocking yeah